Welcome to the Right Handyman Reviews. In these videos, I will show you the pros and cons of some of the tools and supplies that I use on a daily basis. So what we're looking at here today is uh, Makita Impact Drivers. I've got a few of these. Uh, this one here is uh, much, much less used. I bought these two at the same time. This one here, I basically burned it up the other day. Uh, it was starting to work kind of slow. I actually had smoke coming out of it at one point, so it was kind of burning up on me. Uh, this one's probably put in 20,000 three inch screws in its life. I've been using it for about two years. And uh, just listen to it when it puts uh, a screw in here. It's already warming up quite a bit. It really seems to kind of struggle. It hammers very early on in the cycle. And this is the good one. It hammers later in the cycle. It doesn't seem to slow down as much. <clears throat> it spins faster from the get-go. Uh, so obviously, this one here has got some problems. It did quit working on me. Once it cooled down here, it seems to be working again, but it's not working right. And I'm gonna guess all the wiring inside is probably uh, half melted. Um, so I guess the question is, you know, is Makita, do they make a good uh, impact driver? Um, this is the second one I've actually burned up. I'm on my third one now, and I'll probably have to buy another one as a backup. Um, why Makita? Why did I go with Makita? Well, that's a, uh, uh, an influence of my father. Um, he was a welder for many, many years. He used uh, Makita grinders and stuff like that, and he always talked very highly of them. They, uh, you know, last a long time, they worked well, and they never let them down. So, of course, I got into Makita tools. Um, I have many, many cordless tools. I probably have over a thousand dollars worth of batteries. I got about a dozen batteries of various sizes. I've got uh, impact drivers. I've got drills where you can change the clutch for doing woodworking. I've got reciprocating saws. I've got flashlights. I've got weed trimmers. So, of course, these batteries are interchangeable with everything. So. Once I started with Makita, I stuck with them just for uh, convenience sake, to be honest. Now, are they, are they a good tool? Um, like I said, this one's probably put in 20,000 three inch screws in its life. It's put in hundreds of flag bolts. And I mean, those take a lot of driving force. Um, so do I like it? Yeah, you know, it's been good. It's been a good tool. It's worked very hard in its life. And finally, um, it had enough time to retire. So I can't really blame it for that. So is it a good tool? Yes, I believe it's a good tool. Um, are all their tools good? I don't know, I haven't used every single one. I have uh, a Makita circuit or saw I've had for years. That thing has never let me down. Um, are they the best tool? I don't know. I haven't used too many other tools, especially impact drivers. I've only ever used Makita. So is it the best impact driver? I don't know. Are there better ones out there? quite possibly. Is this a good tool? Yes. If you want something that's going to go um, for about two years, and I mean this thing gets used virtually on a daily basis during the summer. Um, I've built decks, I've built fences, I've built pergolas, I do a lot of outdoor construction during the summer. And this has not let me down. It burned up on me. I can't blame it for that. I mean any tool eventually you wear it out. So. For me to go to another tool, whether it be, uh, you know, pick any other brand name that's highly rated, um, not saying I wouldn't do it. The problem being right now is that I've got so much money invested into uh, Makita batteries, Makita tools, it's, it gets rather expensive to change brands all of a sudden. I mean, you can do it slowly as the tools wear out and the batteries wear out. Um, so I could change but for the time being, I think I'm going to stick with my Makita. Um, this thing's actually generating a lot of heat. I drove a whole bunch of screws there earlier on just to see what it would do. So, <clears throat> if you want a good tool, I would recommend Makita. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, so take that as you want. Um, I wouldn't 
mind considering trying some other tools. It's just that it's a big investment for me to try something because I'd have to have a whole different set of batteries, chargers, tools, and stuff like that. But I mean, I can slowly change over time. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to go down and pick up just a couple more Makita impact drivers, just the tools. I have more than enough batteries. And uh, if I end up burning up a couple more, you know, if I get at least two years out of each of them, I'll be happy. But if they don't last that long, I will probably consider changing. So, long story short, um, I'm quite happy with my Makitas, even though I've uh, used them to the point of destruction. I, at the moment, will keep using them. So, uh, I think what we're going to do here is, uh, let's take it apart. Since I know it's no good to me anymore, I'm just going to pull all these screws out. Basically, what I want to find out is, uh, you know, did I actually melt the wiring in this thing? How bad is it? I'm not going to be able to sell this tool. It's basically going to end up in a scrap heap somewhere. And uh, this is more curiosity. I've never actually opened one of these things up before to see what the inside looks like. Well, what better thing to do it on than something that's broken? I don't have to worry about putting it back together properly because, well, that ain't going to happen. They've got a lot of screws in these things. Um, I have dropped, not this one, the other one that I actually uh, burned up, I dropped it off, it was about a 13 foot high garage, twice unfortunately, onto cement. I mean she bounced pretty good both times. And that one continued to work well for another year and a half after that before I burned it up. This one I've dropped off decks, um, you know, three, four or five feet high on the grass and that. I mean, I don't claim to abuse my tools, but obviously I'm probably not as nice to them as I could be, but they, uh, well, they're here to work. They're here to make me money. And sometimes I'm clumsy, so it happens. But uh, these ones have proven to be pretty tough. I haven't actually cracked the housing or split the housing open on this one yet, but uh, this back piece holds it together as well. So let's pry that off. Cool. So let's get a real good look in here. Don't see anything I would consider melted. It's got a pretty decent looking bearing in there. And of course, if you look closely enough, you'll see that's probably part of the electric motor. Does that just pop out of there? Nope. Oh, come on now. Ah. There's another screw on the inside there holding it together. So let's see, we've got two, four, six, eight, that makes 10 screws. 10 of these little screws here that are holding this entire housing together. So that's quite a few, which probably explains why it didn't fly apart when I dropped it off uh, the deck or the roof. I got drywall dust, you know, dirt and grime here. I mean, it's actually not terrible considering what I've put it through. So let's see what we got in here. We got uh, a lot of dirt and grime. I have to pull back. So obviously in here, that's going to be where all the uh, gearing and impact driver and stuff like that is. And this little bad boy here is going to be your little electrical motor. Now uh, that is copper wiring and it's not very copper colored. In fact, it's pretty black. Now, is that just dirt? Can I rub that off of there? No. I had smoke coming out of this thing, so I know I heated it up way too much. And uh, when you look at this copper wiring here, it's all nice and copper colored. This stuff is a bit blackened. However, you can see here it's got a very nice splined gear on it, so that's going to engage very well with the uh, mechanism inside there. Um, here's all your copper armatures and that. I've got, you know, a good size bearing there, and I got another one on this end. The bearings uh, are in good shape; they're not making any noise. Oh, that's the magnet because she—that's very cool. So that's your magnet, that's part of your electrical motor. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, have ever studied electromagnet 
electromagnetism before, but uh, that's how an electric motor works. You throw a current through it and it alternates the uh, charges and makes this thing spin at whatever pace. Uh, won't get into that today, but uh, not, not melted, but uh, definitely overheated and uh, probably just put her through too much that day. So uh, that's very interesting. There's the basic insides of an impact wrench. These are the brushes. So you can see here that the brushes are uh, spring loaded. So that's what connects up with the uh, spinning, the spinning armature here. Brushes are actually in pretty decent shape. A lot of the ones you get now are brushless, so they're not going to have these in this. Um, I, anybody who's worked with electrical tools before, I have a uh, DeWalt, you know, wood planer, and I've had to change the brushes in it because after a while these things do wear out. In this case, they didn't even come close. So. Uh, yeah, kind of neat. I just wanted to open that up, have a look. Um, basically, you know, my initial review uh, of these is they're pretty, pretty tough. I do, I only have one of these left. I got one of these DTD 152s left and it's pretty much new, but I know at some point I'll burn it up as well. So I always like to have a backup and uh, I'll probably go down and take a look and see what they got. And maybe I'll get something just a little, a little more powerful than this one, but there's a quick look at the inside. Very cool, never had one of these open before.